Hello and welcome to this video tutorial from BlenderCookie.com. My name is Jonathan Williamson and in this tutorial we're going to do pretty much the same thing that we did in the previous tutorial from David Ward on using shape keys and drivers. However, what we're going to do this time around is we're going to create a, a driven shape key that's then rigged with an armature to interactively dilate or undilate the pupils on the eyes for the face that we have here. And so the way that we're going to do this is we're first going to create shape keys for the eyes that will um, be placed at the fully undilated and fully dilated size. And then we're going to add a driver to that shape key that's set to an armature that will allow us to then scale that armature up and down to dilate or undilate the eyes. And then lastly, we're going to do one last thing and apply a custom shape to that armature so that we can make it much more visually interactive but also much much easier to use for people that perhaps are not as familiar with the rig as you yourself are the artist and this is very handy if you need to hand your model off to somebody else to animate that way they don't have to know all the the fine intricacies of the of the rig in order to use it so let's go ahead and get started by first setting up our shape keys so with the eyeball selected let's go ahead and zoom in on it and from the object data panel here Let's go and hit plus to add a new shape key. And we're first going to leave this one, the basis, exactly as it is. This is our starting shape key, or basically our, our default position where we don't want any changes. And so then we'll hit plus key again to add another key. And this is gonna be our, our dilated pupil. So we can go ahead and name this to pupil underscore dilate. And you don't have to name it, but it's always a good practice too. And then you can hit tab to go into edit mode to apply any changes you want to the model for that, that shape key. And so in this case, I'm going to just alt right click on the loops that make up my, my pupil and just scale them up so that we can, it would act as if the, the pupil were dilating. Okay, so just like that. And now leaving edit mode confirms the shape key and you can just scroll the value up and down to see it work. Okay, so this is very cool. Now what we want to do, that's the easy part. Now we want to go ahead and add a driver or, excuse me, we want to first add an armature and then we'll add a driver to that, that shape key, which is driven by the armature that'll allow us to scale the armature back and forth to affect this value here. And if that sounds confusing, it'll all make sense here in a second. So let's first, with the eyeball selected, let's hit Shift S and cursor to selected. And then from the top view, let's go ahead and hit Shift A, Add Armature, Single Bone. And we're going to hit Tab on this armature and select everything. And let's just position it right at the, the pupil of the eye. And then we'll go ahead and rotate it around. Like that. And we can go ahead and scale it way down. Select everything. Take it up. We rotate it. It doesn't have to be real exact. Um, and the reason it doesn't have to be exact is just because the uh, this will this armature or this bone will never actually deform the actual eye. It simply is going to act as a placeholder, or not necessarily a placeholder, but a handle that will then drive the deformation of the eye. And so it doesn't have to be exact because it's not actually deforming anything. And so with the, the bone position, let's go and hit control N and that will, and we'll say Z axis up and that will just fix any rotation that we may have had on that bone. So hit tab, hit tab to go and leave edit mode. And now we want to go ahead and add the driver so we can see it working. And so let's select the eye and on the shape keys here, go and press D with your mouse over the value and that will, that's a shortcut to add a driver to the selected field. And then to modify the driver, let's go over to the, the graphs editor here. And then under the mode, switch over to drivers from the default F curve editor. And now to select the driver that we want to modify, in this case, our value for the shape key, we need to toggle down the key or shape keys. And we can see our value field here. And if we left click on it, the values will pop up on the right side. And so there's a couple things we want to change here. First, let's go ahead and change the type from a scripted expression over to an average value. 
And then we want to add a variable. And in that variable, we want to go ahead and change it from a single property over to a transform channel and set the object to an armature and the bone to the bone. And this just tells the driver to use this exact bone from within that armature to drive this. And so now currently this is set to the X location. And so if you move this back and forth across the X, you can see it adjusting the shape key. So this is all fine and dandy, but we want to have this actually affect the scale because that way we'll be able to just scale it up and down to scale the pupil up and down. So let's go ahead and set this over to a either X, Y, or Z scale. And in this case, it doesn't actually matter because we're just going to be using general scaling. So we'll just set it to the Y scale. And then we also want to tell it to use local space so that it's determining that scale based on the local position of the bone, not the, the global overall scale. So now when we scale this up, you can see it's affecting the pupil there. But one problem is, is that we have to scale the bone way down to affect the pupil rather than scale it up. And really, I'm not a big fan of this because for one, the bone gets really, really small there. So underneath the, the modifiers within the driver's panel, let's go ahead and change the, the generator from the Y and the X to negative one and the default one. This way, at default scale, it's still at zero. And then if we scale it, scale it up, it increases the pupil. So that way it's relative to, oh, we scale the bone up and the pupil scales up. So this is cool. But right now, this really is not a very visually um, descriptive shape for the bone. You know, nothing about this bone tells us that it's gonna scale up the pupil. And so what I wanna do is I wanna now add a custom bone shape to this. And the way that we can do this is let's first go ahead and hit control A and apply pose as rest pose or as the default pose. And then let's hit control tab to leave edit mode. And we're gonna hit shift A, add mesh circle. And before doing anything, let's go ahead and over in the operator panel, let's change these vertices from 32 over to 12. And then let's hit um, R and X to rotate around the X axis 90 degrees by typing in 90 on the number pad and pressing enter. And then we'll go ahead and hit control tab, or we'll go into edit mode and then scale down. And just to about the size of the pupil on our eyes, somewhere in there. And then the shape that I want to use is something that would make me think of a eye shape or something that might be descriptive to say, hey, if you scale this down or up, it'll affect the pupil size. And so something that speaks to me in that sense would be a circle with two triangles on the top and bottom that kind of point in. And so we can create this real easily by selecting the top edge and the bottom edge, hitting E to extrude, S to scale, and then left clicking and hitting S and X to scale along the X axis and typing in zero on the number pad and pressing enter. This way we can just press W and remove doubles to leave us with a solid shape. But I don't want these faces to be filled because we want this just to be a wireframe object to make the bone shape at least visually obstructive as possible. And so if we just select the top and bottom edges again and hit X and delete edges, we can solve that. Now we're gonna hit tab to leave edit mode and we wanna go ahead and apply this shape to this bone. And this can be done by switching over to the bone panel and underneath the display, the custom shape, we can set to our mesh, which is the name of that one and then at bone. Okay, and now currently it's rotated the wrong way. And so let's go and hit control tab and save it. And let's see if we can control R or alt R or we'll just go ahead and rotate this around. And so in this case, if we rotate around the local X axis, which you can do by hitting R and then X, X twice, and we'll just type in 90 degrees. That way it rotates like so. So now you can see that we have this shape here. Only problem is that when we go into wireframe mode, it's invisible because of the mesh. So we can solve this by switching over to the object buttons first. And we want to change the type from textured over to wire. So it displays always. And then just in the case that it would be intersecting with the mesh, let's go ahead and just turn on X-ray. So that way it's always visible, no matter which way we're facing. And then you can just simply scale that up and down 
And there you have it. But there's one more thing that I would like to do because this all this works great right now. Actually, you know, we can scale it up and it works. And the triangles actually fit very well with the the actual size of the pupils. But I would like to be able to lock the tr the scaling so it can only go to about there and there before it just stops. This just keeps it as cohesive as possible. For example, because if I were to, say, animate the scaling from here to there, then if I scaled it down or if I wanted to adjust the pupil again while animating, I would first have to scale it all the way down and then scale it even further before I actually affected the pupil. Whereas if I then just locked it at right here, then I don't have to do that. And the way that we can do this is by going over to the Bone Constraints panel, and we're going to add a constraint to limit scale. And we're going to affect both the minimum and maximum of all the X, Y, and Z axis. And what we're going to do is we're going to set each one of these, the minimum to, to 1 and the maximum to 2. And basically what that says is that we're going to, the minimum is its default position or its default scale at 1, 100% and it can only scale twice its value. So it can scale to 200%. And so if we go ahead and just, we can just copy and paste these by hitting Control C with our mouse over that field, and then Control V and Control V, and we'll do that to each of them. So now we can't scale it any smaller and we can't scale it any larger than 200%, which is right where the value that we set to our driver, which if we selected here, or here, was even though it doesn't look the same, it is a total of two from negative one to one. And so those correspond very nicely. And so there you go. This is a, a shape key driven uh, pupil dilator that works very, very well. And since it is an armature, we can, you know, if we were to go in and rig the rest of this face, or if it were a full character, then it stays within that armature. So if we're animating it, we could very easily move the character around, scale the pupils down, adjust the face, anything that you wanted to very, very easily, very effectively. And by using the custom bone shapes, we're able to make it visually descriptive of what this does. You know, you can look at this and say, oh, okay, you know, it's based, it's located at the pupil. The arrows are pointing in. And so that would tell me that, you know, it's relating directly to the pupil. And so if I then just scale it, it's going to affect my pupil size. Cool. So there you go. This is a quick tutorial on setting up a custom shape key driven pupil dilator. Thanks again for watching and I will see you next time.